My biggest sporting achievement is probably getting to world number one, my career. I don't know, I'm, I'm very happy with it. So I sit here as a happy man. <laughs> uh, for me, something similar, but if I have to pick one thing is 14 Roland Garros. I had um, a very good team around me that helps, a very good family that, uh, since the beginning. I received probably the, the right values to, to, to keep growing. And I, I really believe that for me, the most important thing in my career is have the, the, the passion to keep improving all the time. For me, it's always try to find new things to get better and better. I think that makes the difference between, I think, the, the very top players and the other ones that are very good yeah, players. Yeah, maybe one little thing you can add to your game and, uh, you know, even though you may be already playing super good, but there's always a little bit extra you can do. Also, surrounding myself with the right people early on and uh, throughout my career, you know, choosing the, the best people that would inspire and motivate me to get to the tops. For me personally, I will say just uh, practice with the right attitude, uh, with the right spirit, uh, listen to, to, the, to the people next to you, uh, be humble enough to, to, to keep listening to people even if you are having success. And then, I mean, the rest of the things uh, are happening. You know, you have mistakes, uh, you, you, you achieve things, but it, you need to learn by, by yourself, I think, a couple of, couple of things that nobody can tell you at some point. Yeah, take feedback, uh, not the personal way. The people that are around you, parents, coaches, and so forth, fitness, physios, they all want the best for you, and they have usually the best intentions. So I know sometimes it looks as quite uh, critical, and when you're young, you don't want to hear it because you want to hear that you're the best and you're going to be world number one, but unfortunately it's not like that. So it's a very fine line between actually being confident and believing you're going to do it, to uh, I'm not very good because everybody tells me you're not so good, you know, so I think knowing that you actually also have time and um, That you have to remember maybe that 50% of the coaching that you get is comes from within you are your own coach as well Because I think a lot of times we forget that I am a big fan of a sport in general first of all the the, the sport by itself uh, is an inspiration for me I love football so uh, for me when I was a kid uh, Ronaldo Nazario have been a, a huge inspiration and uh, then I had the chance to spend some time with him. But as a tennis player for me, Sampras was a good inspiration, uh, but Carlos Moya, that is my coach today uh, too, he, he was very next to me and uh, yeah, I think uh, in some way he helped me a lot when, when, I, when I arrived on the tour. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously tennis players, me, Stefan Edberg, and then also Pete Sampras, uh, special people in my life. Stefan Edberg also coached me for two years, so that was obviously super duper special. Um, I mean, I love basketball growing up as well, so clearly uh, Michael Jordan, and then also actually Shaquille O'Neal, I looked up to, I thought, you know, that's just, just the funnest, coolest sport out there. For me, uh, I know how many important icons have been part of this campaign. So, uh, for me personally, today be part of it uh, is is something that uh, I am super proud of, you know, and share this opportunity with uh, probably my my biggest rival and uh, a close friend today uh, makes this uh, more more special. Unique opportunity to be working together with Rafa. It's definitely a special relationship that. Uh, it could be such rivals, but then actually end up at the end of the career being able to sit alongside one another and do such a campaign is, is cool. Shooting together with Annie Leibovitz was, uh, was special. It was my third time, I believe. Uh, we've worked together and again, uh, super special, of course, uh, very unique. Um, I think also it embodies here everything. We, we're sitting sort of on the peak of the mountains, you know. Um, like I said before, I'm very proud and happy about my career and my playing days, but I'm also ha so happy it's over. And obviously also Rafa has re reached uh, his peak and, you know, tennis uh, immortality with his career. So I think uh, being out in the elements in a complicated uh, situation is one we've had to endure for over 20 years and um, I think being here together doing uh, the photo shoot together I think uh, is for us definitely very meaningful and very special.
I am not used to the <laughs> to the snow as Roger. That <laughs> he lives so first, he li he first lives, time he sees he the snow. He lives on the on the snow, so okay, I, I, I don't feel my ears, but I am enjoying a lot <laughs> the the shooting and yeah, I'm having fun. For me, if I have to spend uh, one week here, it will be different. But <laughs> but today I I really enjoy it. I do remember, probably not him. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> when you won your first Wimbledon. Oh. I was, uh, was two th which year was 2000? 2003. 2003. And I was nice to you or? Um... A little bit arrogant. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on. No, we were, I mean, you were so, honestly, you were super nice. I was just uh, arriving on the tour. I'm a junior, so I was super shy to talk to you, but you were very nice, yeah. I do remember your first match in Monaco. What year was that? Uh, uh, probably was 2003. Yeah, Three also. Yeah. I mean, he was super young, so good, and of course, you know, we we're all thinking, oh, another Spaniard, another clay quarter dirt baller, future top tenner, maybe probably even more, and he achieved everything. For me, I think the really, really special moment was when I was world number one in 2004, and I played you in Miami, and he, and he actually beat me, which was maybe a surprise to some, uh, but I kind of at that but point. You were a little bit sick. I, I, yeah, I had a sunstroke <laughs> actually, but still he beat me fair and square. And uh, I mean, that was that was cool, you know, like to see the young players come up, you know, the Murrays, the Djokovic's, and had, having a chance to play them that very first time. That first match will always be very meaningful, even though I lost it. And uh, it's been um, a great uh, rivalry with like so many other players, but uh, Rafa, of course, you know, with his playing style and his, you know, sort of attitude on court at a young, young age uh, was... Uh, was not like everybody else. You could feel that there was something special coming, for sure. I don't miss those days, but I miss them because uh, it was obviously always a big moment when we played each other. We have been in, in the tour uh, for over 20 years and uh, we met a lot of new people. Uh, uh, and at the end, what really will make me feel really proud and happy is when I leave this world, if the, the, the tournament directors, the, the people who work on the tournaments, uh, staff, uh, ATP talks good about uh, who, who I was on the tour or who I am as a person more than a tennis player, because as a tennis player at the end, uh, we have the titles, we have the, the achievements and that's, that's how it is. I, I achieved more than what I ever dreamed about. No? So, uh, I mean, for me at the end, the, the legacy in terms of uh, human being, uh, even for me, after achieve all the things that we achieve, I think for me is the, the most important thing, without a doubt. I hope if I'm remembered not only as a tennis player, but also as the person behind what I gave to the game and what I represented to the game, and it was less about all my Wimbledon victories or whatever it was, that meant a lot to me. So I think if I can be remembered more also as the personality other than just a player, that'd be great. And if I was good, a good role model for kids, I mean, that would make me happy too. And it would be nice, you know, like what Rafa said, if the people are happy to see us again. Not yeah. like, oh no, that <laughs> guy again. No, uh, we, yeah, hopefully that's the case, so. Thank you. Hey, you did it. That was good.